honor of the Barcelona Dragons to feel the cold steel of a Claymore defeat. Have you ever had one of those days, a day when things just won't go your way? Jack Picknell had one Sunday when he took his unbeaten Barcelona Dragons to Edinburgh to face the Claymores, and a good start was essential. The give is to Thompson, and the ball comes loose. And it looks as though the Claymores have recovered, and they have. Still, Paul McCallum only managed a 34-yard field goal from it, so maybe things weren't that bad. Then, just as you think you've got back on track, a great drive culminates with a throw to the end zone and obvious pass interference by Dave Wilson. Well, obvious to everyone except the officials. It's enough to get your goat. That was unbelievable. In the end zone. This is called four vertical. They see two deep. Everybody's in man-to-man -man coverage. Now it's a sprint. The ball is underthrown. Wilson is actually beat and it's interference. Yep. He comes across, locks his hands. Hey, if they don't see it, it's all fair in love and war. Intended receiver, rather, was hey, you ever Kenny George. Hey! Then watching out for those strange men in dresses, you drive into the second quarter only to see Kelly Holcomb throw a pick to the very same Dave Wilson. It gets worse. Your D forces Steve Matthews to scramble, but they still get points. Third and long for Matthews. And he throws wide open into the end zone. Touchdown, La Chapelle. You start to bounce back. The opposition's head man is worried. Shut up. Now it's your turn to apply the pressure. Beaver right. 960 speedy London. Come on, babe, make a play. Have to get all the way to the 38 for a first down. Open receiver right at the 38. And the reception is made by Shed. And now they're saying it hit the ground that he trapped the ball. And Shed is hot. Fires the helmet over by the Dragon sideline. Good awareness by Shed. He's going to come down and work right beyond the marker. Let's see if he catches the ball, though. That's a catch. That's a catch, and he has every right to throw his helmet and get upset. Still, you're in field goal range for one of those four-point long ones. Anything 50 or more yards is worth four. He was hitting them in practice, but the snap is bad. Bad snap. And there to cover up the ball, Mark Sander and John DeWitt meeting. I don't know if it was a bad snap or a bad hold. Oh, yeah. Okay, regroup at the half, and then a chance to put things right in the second half. Let the Spanish boy, Paul Call kick off. I put Call in the goddamn game, he kicked it out of bounds. God damn it. Chill, Jack. Now you're moving. Third and five. Open receiver, and the catch is made. This will go for six. Kenny Shedd into the end zone, and Barcelona on the board. Okay, they're worried now. They're forcing deep passes into double coverage. Well, they back him up five, a second and 14, and Matthews drops the throw. Good protection down the middle of the field, and it's broken up. Was it intercepted? No, are they saying he made the catch? You gotta be kidding. Yo, Murphy all the way at the five. That is almost, well, you see it right there, Jack McNeil. <laughs> Even if you saw it, you don't believe it. La Chapelle in motion to give to Stacy. Touchdown, Claymore. But don't give up, Jack. You've still got a chance. Holcomb in trouble. Uh, and he's picked off. He might, he might go. George Cogno. Oh. Great and he play. steps out of bounds as it's intercepted. So just like that, the Dragons give it right back away. And if the interception isn't bad enough, Kelly's been knocked silly. Quick, send in backup Tony Saka. Saka back to throw, and down he goes. 
It just wasn't Jack's day. The Dragons would go on to score a late touchdown when Holcomb found Bryce Burnett with a four-yard pass. They even went for the onside kick, but you guessed it, Ivan Imbernone put the kick straight out of the park. Could anything else have gone wrong, Jack? Certainly, it was the Claymore's day as they remained unbeaten and put the Dragons to the sword by the score of 23 to 13. And Saran, last year you had a terrible start to the season. This year you got the close one last week. It must feel good to get one at home. Oh, it feels really good because, you know, last year, we, you know, we didn't win one home game. And it's great to start off, you know, for the Scottish fans. And, uh, you know, for ourselves, I mean, we're 2-0 now. And uh, we put ourselves in a pretty good position for us setting ourselves up trying to bring the world ball to Edinburgh. Uh, last week's game against London, you pulled it out in the end. This week you were leading at the beginning of the game. What was the difference this week? Well, I think more. I think uh, overall the guys was focused, you know, because we came home in the second half against the London game. And so we wanted to start, you know, you know where we left off. And uh, guys were really tuned up, you know, to come out in the first half and take it to them early. You know, and not having to try to come from behind in the second half and struggle. And that's exactly what we did, you know. So last week it looked like you had a lot of trouble getting the running game established, but this yeah. week some of it's there. Some of it's there, and, you know, we're going to get better each week. I, you know, you look at it, we only had two weeks of training camp. And, you know, we had to play our first football game. We got to, I mean, so offensively, it takes a little time for the offensive line in the back, you know, to gel. It's easier for the passing game for us run, for us run block, and it takes a little time. And we're going to get better each week. Your line better than last year's line? A hell of a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those guys go out, and they, they, just, they just get it done. They knock people off the football. And, and you love it as a running back. Now, that's why I'm so excited about it, because I know when we do get everything down, you know, everything's going to be great. It must feel real good to get the first win at home under your belt. Well, especially against a team as good as this team. Like, they, they're a good football team. We, we knew we were going to have our hands full going in for our players to come out and play as well as they did in front of our, our home crowd and for them to get a chance to see what we had promised them last year, that this would be a different Claymore football team, and then for us to be able to live up to it and back up our promise was especially pleasing for all of us. One of the things we're seeing this year that we never saw last year is some of the breaks are going your way. That's true. And, and you know, the, the difference there is we've got, we've got better players. They're playing hard all the time. They believe that they can win. They can believe they've got a shot at some things. And a perfect example is like the deflected pass that Willie Tate ran under and caught. You know, if Willie isn't there, that could be an interception as easily as a, um, uh, us right. making the reception. So I think that's an example of what you talked about. And, and that happens when you have a good football team and they play hard. Okay. Coach Jim Kreiner, Mike, the Claymores have a quality football team. Who did you pick as the man of the match over there? Well, it might have been the referees because yeah. they, they really got Barcelona out of it when they needed to be there. But probably it was Steve Matthews. As uncertain as he looked against London, Matthews made all the right decisions against Barcelona. And when Barcelona put the pressure on him, he moved away from the pressure found Sean LaChapelle for the touchdown, made good things happen. My MVP was the defense. Everybody looked at me like I was, you're supposed to pick one individual, but I thought the defense did an outstanding job. Most of the first 13 points of the games that the Claymore score were off turnovers and a few du dubious calls. Yeah, the dubious calls hurt a lot. Now, one thing with the defense, they laid back to stop Demetrius Davis, and they brought the defensive backs up at the same time. But the other thing they did was their DBs took a lot of chances, and they got away with it this week. They, they were in position, which is the good thing, but they took chances. They let guys t catch the ball, then hit them. I don't know if they'll be able to get away with that week in and week out. And they held Barcelona to 13 yards rushing. The Claymars are at home again on Sunday against the Amsterdam Admirals. We'll have highlights of that one for you.